three, two, one. What's going on, everyone? You're watching another episode of Ash on Comics. My name is Ash, and here is today's comic, and what a beautiful comic it is, Batman Last Night on Earth. Joining me, as always, is Stan the Man. What's going on, Stan? Oh, you're very quiet today, but he's always got his big drink. Um, today, what are you drinking, Coke? Good. Coke is it. Here's my digital copy here of Last Night on Earth, a reading copy. Um, I'm not even going to read. This is such a beautiful book and everything. I don't want to like crease the spine or anything, but I'm glad to have this in my collection. And uh, I just love reading them on um, the iPad Pro. I know not everyone has one of these, but once you, if you get one of these and you start reading books on it, it doesn't have the court, the tactile feel of a paper comic, which is nice. But there's so many other advantages that just I get lazy. Um, so I did this review for uh, one big purpose. I, I already recorded and um, I've uploaded my main review of this book, which tended to be way too long. This is a thick book. It's like 60 pages. Um, and I ended up spoiling it and everything. Just And then I was thinking backwards. I was like, you know, I don't think this book... I think a lot of people are going to not want to be spoiled, and I don't actually want people to spoil it. In, in my big review, I warn all time, please stop watching if you haven't read this book. Um, you shouldn't spoil yourself. This book has got quite a few twists and turns, which is not a usual thing in typical comics. Um, it's It's got a warm, human, emotional plot line um, with great character moments. Um, and these sort of things, you kind of want to, you want to come across them organically. You don't want to know that they're there and then read it. I'm, the book will be good no matter what. I read this book t two times and it was just as good the second time, but I got to remember, you know, those feelings of coming across this first. So anyways, I thought I would just try to put together this hodgepodge, uh, quicker review that, that talks about the book and my feelings without spoiling anything about now, this type of book, it's impossible not to spoil. I mean, I could just say, yeah, the book's good. Go buy it. That's my review. But to talk about the book, it's very difficult not to spoil anything. So I know it said this would be a spoiler-free review, but it's that's not 100% accurate. It's going to be a major reveal type thing, free, uh, as far as like plot hooks and things go. I'm not going to you know, expose the twists of the story or things like that. Um, as best I can, it's going to just be talking about the things I liked about the book. I'm going to skip ahead to a couple different pages that I thought were key. In doing so and seeing some pages, if you're that type of person, you can extrapolate things. You're going to know like, oh, here's a scene where Batman looks at this person or, you know, but you know what I mean. So let's go forward. Um, it starts off like a typical Schneider Greg Capullo Batman book, which unfortunately these days is not typical. Um, if you if you read this, you start at the beginning like if you feel like you're right back with the new Fifty Two Batman run. Um, if you remember, everyone remembers Court of Owls, right? Everyone loved that book. I believe you're going to love this book too. This book does require a little bit of letting go, a little bit of suspended disbelief. Put your trust in the writer. This is a dark future Batman book. Um, so we see Batman on his case and he goes through, I'm not going to talk about what happens in all that scene, but it's sort of the setup for the entire story going forward. And I'm led to believe that the next two books will all be based around the events of the first few pages of this book. We get this, um, now famous scene of Bruce in the psych ward. Um, if you've seen the, the preview, this is the part that's in the Batman previews that are in all the um, all the DC books <laughs> these days. Um, they preview this book, and there's a few pages. And this is fantastic. Um, this had me on the edge of my seat. Um, we get to see Bruce vulnerable. And this is a very difficult thing to do. Batman is the type of character that it, it, it's so easy to, if, in trying to make him vulnerable, um, to just make him seem weak and not like Batman. I think 
A lot of fans are having a problem with the current Batman series because of this very thing. But Snyder is able to put Bruce in a situation where he's vulnerable and it's believable and it feels right. And it's also kind of scary because, well, it's not necessarily scary. It's like heartbreaking because we don't want to see Bruce like this. Um, but even Batman, I don't think, could stand up to what he's facing here in the normal Batman way. But thankfully, he's got his trusty friend Alfred, who's also part of it. And Alfred really loves Bruce. And I have to commend Schneider in this book for making me a new fan of Alfred. I've always liked Alfred fine. He's been kind of like the Charles Xavier of the X-Men. He's just, nice no, there. No one really loves Charles Xavier. You appreciate that he's like a big part of the X-Men or whatever, but it's the X-Men themselves that you care about. Alfred has been that way for me. Now, other fans may oh, okay, that's fine. Okay, <laughs> I'm not saying you need to feel that way, but for me, that was that way. What I, what I am trying to say is that the characterization that Snyder tells here and portrays Alfred made me fall in love with this character. Um, the, the love and the loyalty that he has for Bruce Wayne is unfound. It just, it's unparalleled. It's, and it, it, the way that it's told, it's so heartwarming and it chokes you up or chokes me up at least. Um, and we see Bruce, you know, he's in the psych ward and, um, he's, yeah, there's a couple scenes where he's just like, please don't go, Alfred, don't go. As Alfred's like leaving, I'll come back and visit you tomorrow, you know, like, and Bruce is struggling. He's just, he's got no one. This is the time where Bruce is faced ultimately, like, I'm trapped in an asylum. I'm crazy. Everything that I've thought I knew is wrong. And the only person who's there for me, the only person I even know to call on is this man, my, you know, my virtual father. I have nothing else. Without Alfred, he's got nothing. Um, and I think there's this vulnerability, this moment, and I relate to it in a spectacular way that I'm not going to go into, but this was a profound moment for me. I just, I was like, wow. And just seeing Bruce and he's not like crying, you know, he's not like a baby about it, but you can see he's just vulnerable. Please just don't go, don't go. Um, and uh, I'm not gonna go fast forward. And eventually Alfred has to show Bruce the suit. Now this is of course, Ash, you, you said you weren't gonna do any big reveals. Well, this is in the preview. I didn't read the preview. I, okay, I get it. Without context, this is not what you think anyways. So um, this is what appears to be a big reveal, and it kind of is. It's a reveal in the sense that it's a shock value thing you weren't expecting to see. Um, so I apologize if you think that was some sort of big spoiler. I only showed it because it's in the, in the preview, and they put it in the preview for the exact reason I'm telling you now is that it doesn't spoil the story. Um, it's just a moment. Um, and you see this and you're like, good God, like what the hell? But it sets up further dialogue um, with Batman and the partnership between the two. Um, let me see. There's a final moment, uh, page 28, <laughs> where Alfred is holding Bruce. He's like, for just one last time, let me hold the boy I love. And in context with everything that you've read up to this moment, which obviously I skipped ahead, and there's a great moment where Alfred talks about, not going to reveal the context, but he talks about his masterpiece that I do in my full review, that I was just like, wow, Alfred, you are the man. But here he just holds, he's like, I just want to hold the boy I love. Um, and it's this great father-son moment that, you know, they're not real father and son, but in a sense they are. And what you learn, what Alfred has done for Batman and how he's been there for him is you're just like, oh, geez. We all wish that we could have an Alfred in our lives. Um, it just, it blew me away. Um, and then we get a sort of rebirth born in the ashes uh, moment for Batman. 
Ah, we get some iconic moments in the book with um, the head in the jar that you see on the cover. And I just love this, where Joker's just like, ha, yes, look at us, just like old times, Batman and Noggin. Am I right, Bats? And Bats doesn't answer. He just walks, hey, is this thing on? And it's just the right amount of levity to this sort of dark grimace, Grimacing, like, you know, this grim, dark future story that Snyder and Capullo are telling. And rest assured, it is. This, this story feels like a mix between Road Warrior and The Matrix. There are some themes that come across very similar. And both are actually kind of similar, you know, on their own, right? Being a post-apocalyptic... But in The Matrix, I say, like, the themes where there's sort of not, like, a digital reality that you're like, oh, but it's it, the themes of how The Matrix had reawakening to see the world in a different way. Um, and then Mad Max, of course, being on the lonely journey uh, to discover salvation, I guess, if you will. Um, Snyder captures this beautifully in my mind. And Joker being here in this head in a jar at first seemed ludicrous. And I was when I was seeing the previews and stuff, I was like, oh, geez, Batman <laughs> carrying around. But it works. It works because, A, if this is the last Batman story, Joker should be there. And so Joker is there in a way. And he's there in his, his purpose, at least thus far in the story, to be this sort of, like I said, this levity moment where it's like, man, if this book could have been super dark. Right, it could have gone like Dark Knight Returns, um, and then that was no, not necessarily would have been so bad. But Snyder brings some of the fun reminder. Hey, even dark comics, even these sorts of there's these comics are always meant to be fun, and this book very much is. Now there's 20 pages that I'm not going to go over um, where Batman has his journey of discovery, but. There's a moment later in the book where Batman, or I should say Bruce, um, has a moment with this child. And it's just this really human moment where the where this kid is like talking about bats and like, do bats see in the dark? Or whatever. And he's like, no, you know, bats don't actually actually see in the dark. And they use this thing called echolocation. And he's like, we're not really allowed to to, you know make echoes or whatever and he's just like oh really and there's this just great human moment this interaction you don't often see with batman slash bruce wayne you know with children and being this this type of figure and he's like oh, you know ready one two three hello 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 and um it just happens for me at the right moment and it shows a side of bruce that I think is often ignored. I don't want to say forgotten, but we're so used to just, you know, Bruce is the, the executive playboy, and then Batman is, you know, the, the Dark Knight, world's greatest detective, and it's always brooding, and it's just that, this dichotomy back and forth, and that's it. But Batman does what he does, not because... He's this great badass who's always trying to exert like how badass he is on everyone. He does this because he cares. He he cares about children. He wants no child to ever suffer what he did. So there's this humanity to the character that makes him a hero that often gets lost in many of the storytelling that we see in the comics where it's just the writers want to focus on Batman just being Batman and beating up the bad guys. And it's good that we, in this story, we remember Bruce, why Bruce does it, why things matter. And this scene is crucial in its own right to the story where decisions that Bruce will make later on. And it's because of what we see here. Um, this book is so good. I'm not going to go forward anymore. Um, you can see it's towards near the end. I absolutely love this book in, in in every way. The more, like I said, I read it the second time. I'm sh looking at these pages as I'm reviewing it, um, trying to be mostly spoiler-free. 
it's 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 just cementing more in my mind how truly great this is. Snyder hit a home run with this book. Absolute home run. Um, please, please go out and buy this book if you like Batman. And when you do, when you read it, open your mind. Say, you know what? I'm getting a different Batman story. If you sit down and read this book and you're like, okay, Batman is only this way for me and I'm very rigid in how I expect my stories to be, you may not get as much out of it. But if you open your mind and say, you know what? I'm curious to read a Batman story set in a dark future um, with a grim premise and just let the author take me away on this fantastical journey to have this adventure. If you do that, I, 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 I really believe you will be well rewarded. If you're the kind of person that's like, I don't like Batman unless he's on the streets beating up thugs and he's a just a total street, you know, street level hero and he does detective work all the time. Like, if you're that type of person, you may not, this might be too wild and weird for you. But I promise you this isn't like uh, Justice League, at least not yet. It references things about the Justice League and, and so forth, but it's not a high level book, right? There's no Batman fighting cosmic villains and things like that. It is somewhat high level in the fact that its scope is beyond Gotham and you know it, it addresses the idea is like is Batman even really Batman is he real um, or is this all a delusion in his head there's these concepts that will rack your brain and if you're too rigid in your feeling about the story you it may not allow you to appreciate it but if you just let go and say you know what I'm gonna trust the author tell me a good story I'm gonna try to like it I think you're gonna walk away very happy um it's got it's got the action it's got suspense it's got heart it's got levity good comedy bits but not overdone there's no snarky dialogue it doesn't ever feel like you're reading sitcom wannabe writing uh snyder has the tone of these characters right i feel um this is fantastic in every way this i tell you with a straight face is is the best Batman book I have read that's not Frank Miller. That's how much I appreciated this. Now, the jury's still out. There's still two more books to go. Snyder could fall off a cliff, and this book could turn into who knows. Um, the art, I'm sure, will stay consistent. <laughs> I, But I'm trusting the author at this point. And as it stands, this book by itself is a complete story in a way. You can enjoy this book and ignore the other two and you'd still have a great book. That's what's kind of so amazing. It's kind of like Star Wars, right? You can watch Star Wars. It's fine. You don't ever have to watch Empire Strikes Back. Um, Star Wars is great. Now, we hope that Empire Strikes Back and then Return of the Jedi will turn out to be great. And those movies did. And hopefully these books will as well. And you say, Ash, you know, that's a pretty hyperbolic comparison. It's like, nah, that, that's how good. That's how much I like this. It, 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 it made me feel emotion. It made me care. Um, it thrilled me, entertained me, it made me laugh. It did so many things in one book. And then on top of that, DC presented it in one of the best quality formats um, with this prestige format. Um, it's, it's thick. It, I was gonna tell you, it's, uh, and the, the paper on it, it's, it's solid. Everything about this screams quality, $5.99. DC is out there to get, let you buy a book that you can be proud of. And I'm ultimately proud of this. And that's why I'm doing this review. And um, I hope you'll read this book. Thanks so much for watching.